Hey everybody, Julio Rodriguez here. Um, just wanted to share a few things with you. Had a couple of meetings canceled this afternoon, so I still wanted to share everything with uh, somebody, so I thought I'd share it with you guys. So um, Avigilon rolled out a couple of really new cool technologies uh, last week at, the, at our virtual uh, trade show. And um, it was something that um, I was really interested to see what was coming up, uh, um, what was coming about. And um, it was really interesting to see what uh, what new things that we had. So I'm gonna share my screen here real quick and let's see if this works here. There we go. We'll put it into a view that you guys can see a little bit easier. There we go, much better. So yeah, uh, Vigilant came out with the, or released the VB400 body-worn camera. And it's something that we've had um, the base system with the VT50 uh, or sorry, VT100 for the uh, past few months and, you know, got some good feedback on it. Um, but the VT100 is more of a uh, more of a retails uh, corporate security grade system. Um, and, and we're really excited to have the VB400 coming out, coming about because the uh, it's it's more of a hardened, ruggedized system. Let me flip down here and get to the specs because that's always the, the fun part where it go. There we go. Make it a little bit bigger. So with the VB400, it's something that um, has a lot longer battery life, um, you know, post pre and post record, 1080p recording, dual microphones, all the stuff that we really want in a ruggedized uh, body cam that um, that incorporates Bluetooth and Wi-Fi, which lets you do peer assisted recording. Somebody pushes a button, everybody within Bluetooth range that has the same uh, body cam would uh, start recording. And then Wi-Fi streaming, which that's kind of how it connects to, to a Vigilon is that we can um, you know, start streaming these things through a hotspot into the Avigilon system. Um, usually in, we use it for security resource officers, uh, stuff like that, where um, it's something that um, you know, someone needs to know that somebody's in duress. It's, it's in conjunction with a panic button. You push the button, it starts recording. Security can see stuff like that and um, you know, go from there. So. It's one of the things that we came out with. I was really excited about that. The other one that we had was the H5A corner mount camera. And with our uh, vertical markets that we uh, work a lot with in the hospital healthcare industry and in corrections, this is something that we've really been looking forward to getting. Um, you know, it's anti-ligature, uh, vandal resistant. Uh, just learned about this the other day where it's IK10 plus, not just on the housing, but on the front of the camera and the lens too. And if you, you can see where the little uh, screws are here, this lens and face of the camera, which is probably the area that's gonna get beat up is gonna be one of the uh, one of the places that we can actually switch out parts on the camera so that if it gets beat up, scratched up, uh, scuffed or anything like that, it can, it can be replaced. So those are two of the cool uh, technologies that we recently came out with that I wanted to share with you guys. And let's see, the other thing is I wanted to go through a little bit of uh, ACC7 with you. So this is what ACC7 looks like. This is our VMS software. And this um, right now is actually showing a few different things that we've got going on, including um, a live web, excuse me, a live web page. Um, we've got cameras pulled up from our Plano, Texas office here. I've got one from our Richmond office here in British Columbia. And then I've got one right here in my office. Hello. That we've got hooked up. So got all these cameras hooked up and I just wanted to run through a few of the cool things that we can do uh, with this system. So one of the things I like about the ACC software and how flexible and easy it is to use is that you can pull up a web page right in the middle of your camera system. So if you have something else that you need to watch like the weather, um, you know, for traffic reports or anything like that, you can have the weather coming into your camera system and have that as a part of your dashboard or something that you need to pay attention to in order to have all the information at your fingertips or your operator's fingertips. Um, we see a lot of our manufacturing customers use this for, you know, like if they have a production um, internal web pages, things like that. We can, uh, Put these together and come up with something really interesting. This is also where we run our um, access control system through. Since our Vigilon ACM is web-based, uh, we can run it inside of here and you can 
run both of them in conjunction with each other at the same time um, through that web interface. Uh, one of the other things that we have that is really interesting um, is the ability to change how these cameras are laid out. So I've worked with a lot of camera systems in the past where it's been really difficult. You know, back in the day, we used to have to um, do things like, you know, reconnect the cameras and or put them into one spot. And, you know, we unplug the camera from one port, plug it into the other. And that's how we switched our cameras around. With this, it's all software driven. So if I wanted to make one camera larger than the other, it's really, really easy to move around or even duplicate camera views, zoom into one or the other and um, just move it around. So you don't have to go in and out of menus or anything like that to, uh, to get this uh, really looking how you want it to look. And then you could save a view and set it so that only certain people can see the views, things like that. One of the other things that we have besides our um, specialized views is we can do maps. So what we're looking at here that I just pulled and dragged over is a multi-sensor map that's laid out on our Plano, Texas facility. I can zoom into it. And what's really cool is if you just mouse over it, you can see the individual views, just a kind of a snapshot of what each camera is looking at just by mousing over. And if you click on it, it's gonna move that camera live view in the next available open slot on the uh, on your camera grid. So we can have these where you can click from into a building map, you can have a live view. It can be a zoomed out view of multiple facilities. There's lots of different ways to uh, to have a flexible view of the screen. Uh, the problem is, though, is that now with all of this stuff to look, that you have to look at, um, it gets harder and harder to pay attention to everything. So, you know, your some of our camera systems uh, that I've installed have been anywhere from, uh, let's see, largest one I think is about 380 cameras. And there's no way you can pay attention to even a quarter of those, even a tenth of those for any extended period of time and be able to really, you know, understand what's going on. So one of the really neat things that we've come up with is something called focus of attention. And what it does is it breaks the cameras down instead of looking at it and trying to decipher what all the pictures are, is you can see this almost like a, I, I equate it to like a fire alarm indicator panel, you know, what zones are active in the, um, in your organization or at your facility. And you can see what's going on in each one of them there's motion. See if I can get my camera to go off on motion here. You see motion on my camera there just turned blue. Got a motion alert. So you can see what's going on here in an indicator fashion. Something like uh, maybe there's a building that you know is not occupied after 5 p.m. And all of a sudden you start to see some of the uh, indicators, you know, go show that there's motion. You can see that there's motion happening in a certain area and be able to bring it up very quickly. Now, one of the other things that we can do with it, it makes it a little bit, it's going to overwhelm the system a little bit, is I can bring up every single motion detection event that's going to happen. So when I click that, every time a camera sees motion, there's my hand because I talk with my hands a lot. Um, <laughs> every time the camera sees motion, it's going to push that up. So you're going to start to see motion from my camera, motion from the Texas cameras, motion from the Canadian, the Canada cameras. So it's going to just, um, you know, kind of go crazy here. And before my computer completely shuts down, I mean, we're going to go ahead and turn that off. So that's just another way to look at the cameras. Um, you can do things like have alerts pop up on here so that, you know, we create um, something called analytic alerts to where people go into certain areas. It creates an alarm. So I've got one set up here where if I go here, it sets off an alarm and it completely overrides the system and brings your attention to what's going on. There's the facial recognition. Of course, I never smile in any of these pictures. So I get really a awesome bad guy look on my face and, uh, you know, be able to do that. Let's go ahead and X that out there. But you get all these alert alerts and alarms. The indicator panel goes red. It shows you what, it, what was going on. You can click on it. You can replay it. There's all sorts of different things that you can do with that. So that's pretty much it for live view and just kind of a few easy to look at things that, um, that we can do there. Um, one of the other things that I like to do and is just really dig into um, all of the analytic or not really analytic feature, all the different searches that we can do with this. 
because there's live viewing, you know, watching something happen. And then if you weren't there to watch it, or if you don't have, you know, a security operator watching your system 24 seven, you've got to go back and search for this footage. Now, let me pull up one of our cameras here. There's a couple of different ways that we can do this. You know, you can just scan through footage this way and see what was going on. And this system really does a good job of being able to quickly go across, you know, hours and hours of footage to see when something happened. Um, but again, just like everything else, it's time consuming and it's really not helpful um, if you're looking for something over, you know, several days. So one of the original searches that we have and that's been around for a long time has been pixel motion. So pixel motion can be anything that happens, you know, um, whenever a pixel changes color, shape, um, anything moves on the screen. It can be a bug, a uh, spider web, anything like that. So if we take a look at what happened in our parking lot, let's go back here from, well, it looks like we have some good motion detection here, from 3 a.m. To, to 8 a.m. last night, or this morning. And we're just going to watch, let's say I want to watch the middle of the parking lot. I'm just going to draw a little square here, a couple little squares on top of each other and see what we get for motion detection. Okay, so far I'm up to 49 results for that time period. So let's see what they look like. And it looks like we got the shadow of the tree. So that information is completely unhelpful to us right now. So all of these events that we're looking at Looks like shadows of a tree for hours and hours on end that really doesn't give us any information. Okay, we've got some car headlights now that uh, that helped us identify something. But again, it's really not helpful to get just car headlights. We need to see people, vehicles. These are where our security incidents are, uh, are happening. So instead of pixel-based motion, what we do is with our analytics-based cameras, our cameras can detect the presence of a person or a vehicle. We call them classified objects. So modifying that same search, we can draw a little box like this. And now we can tell the system that we want to detect the presence of a vehicle in something similar to that same area that we were looking at before, just on pixel-based motion. So we kept the time period the same. We're still looking at um, from 3 a.m. to 8 a.m., so about four hours, almost five hours worth of time. And let's hit search. And now we went from 49 uh, security events down to four security events. So now we can click and see when there was a vehicle coming into the scene as opposed to, you know, something like that. Um, and all those pixel motion-based events where it was just a tree, um, the shadow of the tree moving around or anything like that but really cuts down the amount of time that you have to spend looking at security footage. And then we can change the person and see if there was anybody walking around in the scene. And it looks like for that same time period, there was three people um, in our parking lot. So there's one at 626. We've got another person, looks like two people at 629 AM and then at 633. So again, this lets you really um, go through it quickly and find the security events that you're looking for, because typically when we have something happening in a parking lot, it's usually a person, a vehicle or both that are causing the, uh, the event of um, interest to you. Um, finally, one of my favorite searches has nothing to do with analytics. We do this with pixels, but it really makes things happen very, very quickly. There's another search that we have called the thumbnail search, and this one is by far the biggest time saver I've ever seen. So really what I what I see a lot of security guys um, have to go through is uh, something where, you know, they, they have something that happened and they know where it happened, they just don't know when it happened. So for our, in, for our case here, we can say, oh, uh, let's see. Let's say I wanna see what time this blue truck arrived. So I'm just gonna draw the box around the truck here we go. And go to a time before. Okay, so the truck wasn't there at 6 a.m., but by 4 o'clock, it's here. 
and I'll hit search and we get thumbnails of every single hour. So from six o'clock, six sixteen. So we're getting about 15 minute time frame here. And then we can see already in our first pass that somewhere between 8.50 and 9.08 that the truck arrived. So we can double click on the truck and get another set of parameters, but now we're getting a tighter timeline. Now we're only looking from 8.50 to 9.27, and now we've got it down to about a minute. So I'm just gonna double click the first time I see the truck come in each time, and already we're to the uh, frame where he's coming in and backing into the parking spot. So I'm gonna right click, open in view, here we go, and hit play. And we have that event happening. So yeah, thumbnail searches is, is uh, definitely one of my favorite ones to uh, to try out because or to uh, to test because it's something that you know you really can uh, get your information quickly. So we got thumbnail search, motion search, classified object search. And then um, you guys saw the analytic search let me or the uh, facial recognition that we have. Let me pull that back up. Where's my camera here? On my server, there we go. So I can go here and go into do, do, do. Go my site setup. And we're going to go into face watch lists. So I've added myself to a face watch list, and it's as easy as uploading a picture off of your phone um, or off of your computer. You can take something off of a, uh, take a picture with your phone, upload it from Facebook. If you've got a, a police be on the lookout, uh, domestic violence order, anything like that with someone's picture, you can take this picture, add it to a face watch list. And then the next time the camera sees it, once it's enabled on it, Turn around, say hi. If you were in focus of attention and had that open, it would pop up and give you the alarm. If not, and you had to go back to your events, you could actually go in here and see your face watch matches for any time period. Here we go. Make sure I got my camera selected. Yep, selected. There we go. There's four times. There it is. <laughs> so this is a way that you can um, now create alerts off of this. You can, um, you know, have your security notified by someone that or notified by the system that a face watch list match has occurred and they can respond to it. So that's one of the proactive searches that we have. The other one is the analytic search that I set off uh, a few minutes ago. And what we're, we're doing with that is something that's um, a little bit different than your standard motion detection search. If you um, had cameras for a while, you know you can set the motion grid to be in a certain section of the um, view, a certain section of what the camera's recording, you know, something like this where, you know, it's just a motion detection area. And if you've got some nu nuisance motion happening in the scene and you want to eliminate that, you can come in here and eliminate that area from motion detection and it's not going to go off. I'm going to apply it. There we go. So the other thing that we can do, though, with this camera is come up with a way to create analytic events. So what I did here is I created an analytic event that would trigger an alarm if someone stepped into this area. So for that, we call you know a person in a restricted area uh, somebody entering into a restricted area, a vehicle entering into a restricted area, um, someone leaving this area, or um, someone loitering in this area. So for this one, as soon as um, we've got this set up, so as an object appears or enters into the area, we've got it set for person or vehicle, um, and we can test it out. So if I'm standing here, back my foot up a little bit, I'm not actually in the system. I'm not actually in the area of concern, so it's not going to trigger if I'm standing here or standing here. But once I go into this area here, there we go. We're going to go into alarm. So 
So that's pretty much it for that. I wanted to show that uh, to you guys and share it with you. Um, hopefully we'll have more of these in the future and I'll talk to you soon. Thanks a lot.